Yeah, it's um, just the most incredible gift to get to know the actual nature of mind and the nature of reality. To, to recognize in our own experience this complete perceptual openness that's just always there, it's always the case. And to have a really simple practice where we can discover and gain assurance in that for ourselves is it's just incredible. When I came across the instruction to take short moments of the instinctive recognition of open intelligence whenever I naturally remembered and then just to repeat that in a, in a completely relaxed way and it, it was incredible to discover for myself that there was something about me that I'd always known was there but I'd never really been able to identify. There was something about me that never changed. There was something about me that was constant. There was something about me that made me me, but it wasn't any of the descriptions. It wasn't any of my thoughts or emotions or ideas or concepts because they were always changing. And those were things that I learned all along the way. I wasn't born with any ideas about anything. And so just to stop thinking for a moment and recognize and see what remains. There's an alertness, there's a cognizance, the capacity to know. And the next thought just spontaneously appears. It might be, I can't stop thinking, or it could be anything at all. But the capacity to know, this bright, shining intelligence, is always there. This is the basis and the essence and the only way that we know anything at all. It is the capacity to know. And so, to really discover that this is something that is completely reliable, totally dependable. And I'd never found anything in my life that was dependable. I had all kinds of ideas about um, how I should live my life. And I think that probably the overwhelming idea I had about how I should live my life is that I should try and be happy. That this was the kind of life project, that there was a there was a set of descriptions or feelings or thoughts that I should try and bring about. And that's one thing that was simplified for me very early on in the training, that I didn't need to focus in on all of the ever-changing descriptions because they're just changing all of the time. And even trying to work out um, things like the difference between thoughts and emotions, it's just, it's just complicated. And um, so, for example, I, I might have the experience, I'm feeling really sad now. Now, is that a thought or is it an emotion? I'm feeling sad, but I'm thinking about feeling sad. Otherwise, how would I know that I'm sad? And it's just, you know, is that a thought about the emotion or is that... And, and then, you know, it's just this endless game of just rearranging these descriptions. and. And then this goal of trying to be happy was trying to bring about a set of descriptions, whether they're thoughts or emotions, that fit into my idea about how I should be. You know, I should feel positive, I should feel um, outgoing, I should feel comfortable, um, I should feel sociable, I should feel relaxed. And my experience was that those times did come occasionally, but most of the time there were other things going on as well. You know, there were uncomfortable thoughts about money. There were thoughts of um, resentment towards authority figures. There were um, so there was social awkwardness. There was um, just waking up feeling a bit low or a bit down one morning. And so my project seemed to be to try and work out why I wasn't happy all of the time and then what needed to change for that happiness to be there all of the time and working really really hard at that putting all of my time and energy and money into that project and a big point for me came when um, a time in my life when I'd really managed to achieve everything that I was looking to achieve um, I set up my life so I was living in a beautiful place um, I had a great intimate partner, fantastic physical health, I was eating really well, lots of wild food from the forest, a little vegetable garden, 
I didn't have any immediate financial worries. Um, and I would still wake up some, some mornings feeling just completely flat. Like, well, now I've achieved all of this, why am I still not happy all of the time? And I, and I was happy some of the time but not in the way that I wanted I, or the way that I thought I should be. And fortunately, it was around that time that I met the Balanced View training and I was given this simple suggestion to, for a short moment, why don't you just relax and just allow yourself to be however you are? You know, if you wake up in the morning and you feel happy and positive, then great, just allow that to be as it is. And if you wake up in the morning and you feel a bit miserable or antisocial or quiet, then why don't you just relax and allow, allow yourself to be that way too? And, and this was the most incredible suggestion that I'd ever been given because it was the exact opposite of what I'd been doing. And there was this immediate sense of relief. Y you mean I can, I can jump off this hamster wheel of just continually striving to get somewhere other than where I am? Just this sense that it, was, it always seemed to be just out of reach what I was looking for. You know, I just needed to be a bit happier or a bit healthier or have a slightly better intimate relationship or a bit more money and then I could relax and be happy with everything. But it was always just out of reach and it seemed so close because occasionally I, I really was happy but it never lasted. And that in itself is also a key insight and, and recognition that I saw more and more clearly through just relaxing and allowing everything to be for short moments was this guaranteed self-release of the here and now. So that no matter what thought, emotion or sensation, no matter how I described what was going on, it, it just flowed on by. I, I couldn't fix any experience in place. And it's absolutely key that each one of us sees this fundamental nature of reality for ourselves. Because in that is a real sense of ease and relaxation because I don't need to try and fix things in place anymore. If I feel happy, I can relax and allow that to be as it, as it is. Rather than desperately trying to work out why I've got this uh, happy feeling, what's the cause of it, how can I hold that in place, you know, is it my you know, is it because I'm in Goa or because I ate palak paneer last night or, you know, what is it? Do I have to eat palak paneer every night or can I never leave Goa? And, and then waking up the next morning and I'm still in Goa and I ate palak paneer the last night and I feel a bit miserable. So do I have to stop eating palak paneer and leave Goa? It, it, it doesn't make any sense, but that's the way that I used to live my life constantly looking for this cause and effect relationship about why I'm feeling what I'm feeling. And what was interesting is when I started to allow everything to be as it was, then there was this clarity about all of the data appearing within open intelligence. Um, and so money is a great example about that. There can be so much tension around money um, and I see for myself that the more I'm able to relax and allow even the thoughts of concern and worry about money just to also be as they are, just naturally to flow on by, because they arise spontaneously and then self-release naturally like all other data streams. And from that perspective, I actually have a really clear overview on money, a, a naturally balanced view, so that I can be clearer about my financial resources, I can be clear about how I want to use my money, but I can also be more relaxed about spending money. I used to be so uptight about spending money. It didn't, didn't matter whether I had money or not, it was always like it was, um, it was always really personal when I had to spend money. You know, like paying for my share of the meal, somehow it was like, well, how much can I get away with here and you know hold on you had a lemon soda and I didn't you know, and it's and um, so it is just becoming more and more relaxed with this just this stream of experience this stream of data and from that relaxed perspective we become wiser and wiser just clearer and clearer 
because we're no longer a victim to this flow of experience, to so all of these ever-changing thoughts and emotions. Like victimizing myself for um, not, not feeling sociable sometimes, making myself wrong because I, I'm, I'm, I'm sociable, that's who I am, I should be sociable. Um, and instead relaxing and allowing, just allowing that thought or that sensation just to be as it is, recognizing it as inseparable from the vastness of mind, this openness of intelligence that was always opening further, just pouring out more and more data. And, and look at your own experience, look since you've been sitting here, the thoughts, the emotions, the, the sounds, the sights, the smells, and it's just pouring forth this endless stream of data. And so rather than struggling with all of that, I just relax and allow it to be as it is, just, just for a short moment. But there were some things, some ideas and some experiences that um, it was very, very difficult to relax and allow to be as they were, even for, even for one short moment, because I had been emphasizing them and giving them this um, seeming power over me for so many years. Um, um, so a good example of that would be with authority figures and really adopting this very fixed and rigid position that um, I didn't like authority figures or I didn't trust authority figures or... Um, and, and a lot of that was based on my experience of seeing, you know, abuse of power and things like that. So. And really building up this fixed idea about authority and what it meant. And so it was, it was very new to me to come to um, a group of people and to see that there were people in positions of authority, if you like, who I could really trust. And that trust came about through me actually seeing the way that they used their capacities as a human being. So it wasn't an authority that um, was demanded, it was a respect that came through me really seeing exactly how powerful, how loving, how clear and how helpful a human being could actually be. And it was new for me because I'd never seen it before. And coming to somewhere where I saw these powerful, loving, um, in some ways very normal human beings, but demonstrating a clarity of thought, a openness of relating, and a skillfulness in activities that for me was just, um, it was just kind of like magic. Because I, I had never seen that before. And so, the respect that I have for some authority figures now is just immense and I see just how much I have to learn from some people and for me that's incredibly humbling and also really beautiful because I thought I knew everything. I, I just, you give me a topic and I'll tell you all about it. I'll give you my opinion and it's probably the right one. Any topic, doesn't matter whether I know anything about it or not. <laughs> you know, that's obvious, isn't it? And um, so it has been very humbling to realize that there are people um, that I can really learn about the nature of mind from. And that learning happens in many different ways. And the comprehensive support is what is different something that I've never seen in any other educational program, particularly with regards to education in the nature of mind. So there's this simple practice of short moments that we've spoken about. Um, but that's just part of the um, educational support here. And another one that I've just spoken about is, is the trainer. And a trainer is somebody that can be an incredible help to anyone that really wants to look in more detail at the beliefs and the concepts that we really think are true. And often it's the ones that we may not even be aware of, or it may take a little while for their um, seeming power over us, their power to dictate the way that we speak and relate and behave, to become clear and obvious. And um, 
So I'm incredibly grateful for that relationship. It's amazing to have somebody, and in fact more than one person in my life, whose um, clarity of thought I really, really respect and trust. And that has come about through me gently and in my own time opening to that possibility, testing it out. Well, you know, what happens when I contact my trainer about, about this issue that is coming up for me that I just, I can't allow this to be as it is. Or when I allow it to be as it is for a short moment, it just comes back again and again. What, what do I do there? And what's offered here is the standardized education in the nature of mind, but also the customized education in the nature of mind. And that customization happens quite often through this relationship with the trainer, where we can really share things in a very personal way. But also in the training setting as well, and, and like was mentioned, we have introductory trainings every week. If you're interested, you can go to the information table. But trainings where you can these texts in these trainings are so powerful that if you just copy out one paragraph from one of these texts, open intelligence is shining brightly without you doing anything. And if that sounds like an outrageous or ridiculous claim, then please come to a training and prove it wrong. <laughs> that would be a great approach to come and test. And, um, and then there's the community, to be with other people who are demonstrating what it means to live as open intelligence. It's a constant source of inspiration for me. Because I see just how, just how shiny everyone can be, just how relaxed, how potent human beings can be. And so I feel just so lucky to know so many powerful, clear, loving people in my life. You know, like really, really lucky and I'm inspired every day when I come to this centre and just see the way that everyone's getting on with everything that needs to be done and in such an effortless way and producing such a beautiful space. Um, with addiction and addictive thoughts, the, the, of course there are specific addictions and that is something that if you're interested in then... Um, well, first of all, Balanced View is not a substitute for professional support, whether that is with mental or emotional issues or that's with um, very specific substance abuse. And we would always recommend that you seek professional support there. However, that doesn't mean that you can't also rely on open intelligence whilst seeking that professional support. Um, the primary addiction is the addiction to emphasis of data. And I saw that with all of my addictive patterns, the reason why I smoked, the reason why I did the other things that I used to do um, to try and make myself feel comfortable, either socially or on my own or whatever it was, was the addiction to the emphasis on data, of negative data, of social anxiety, of, or even thinking that I needed certain things to make me feel happy. The addiction to that belief system. So this is the primary addiction that underlies all other addictions. And the more clearly I see that, the more empowered I am to, to take whatever action will support me most practically in, in each circumstance. So um, it, it really is very simple, just to approach it one short moment at a time, to bring it back to that simplicity is so empowering, but then to use the support that reminds you again and again, I have this power. I'm not a victim and I give up that right. 